doing? Hey, Dave. How's Phoenix? Great. Good, Good seeing you. How's Phoenix? Everything okay? Phoenix is nice. It's nice weather. Better than the East Coast. I knew you guys were. You guys in Baltimore? Yeah, um, we're in, uh, we're actually outside. I'm actually um, my friend Matt's up in Northeast Maryland, and I'm actually outside. Of, I'm in Cockeysville. Okay. Uh, I'm in the mountains of North Carolina. Okay, North Carolina. so you probably you're probably a little chilly up there too. Yeah. yeah. It's nice and warm yeah. out here. Nice sunshine. Good vitamin D. Good <laughs> place for a Super Bowl. Nice. Yes, Dave. So talk about last night. Were you there for opening night? How was the uh, – it's not like a traditional opening night where, like, everybody in their media and you have somebody wearing a weird costume walking around being like an idiot. You know? Yeah. How was it? Yeah, that's kind of – it's kind of, you know, it, it's um, it's a TV event. I mean, and, and everybody wants to be att get attention. And you've got a lot of international media. And there was a guy walking around with a barrel who's been barrel boy for 16 years. <laughs> so he was pretty into it. Um, but, you know, it's just a fun thing. And um, – I think everybody, if you approach it with the right attitude, you don't get too serious about it. But there are a lot of members of the media there. You you do get a, a for those who've never been to a Super Bowl, you get the idea of just how widely covered this event is and how it's a worldwide phenomenon. And there's no surprise that it's always the top rated sports program, top rated program in the country every year. So I'm sure this year will be no different. This is a great matchup between two really, really great teams. And um Last night was a good way to start it off. And they call it the Andy Reid Bowl. That's what they're going to call it. You know, and, you know, right away, everybody's like, oh, Andy was the coach for the Eagles, and now he's the cheese coach. It's like, okay, we're going to have a whole two weeks of this stuff. Fantastic. You know? Yeah, well, it's also been the Kelsey Bowl. It's the Kelsey Family yeah. Bowl. Yeah. It's, a, it's the Jalen versus Patrick Mahomes Bowl. So that's the thing. There's a, there's a lot of really great storylines for this for this ball game. So it's, it's going to be – I mean – it's going to be a great one. I, I would expect it to be a very close, epic kind of football game. Exactly. Let's talk about the defense for the Eagles. We uh, Adam and I are big Florida State fans. You have Josh Sweat on your defensive line. He did. He was fantastic with Jimbo Fisher in his years down in Tallahassee. Uh, what does he bring for this squad? Because he was very good. And I can't believe he was he was picked in the fourth round. What, what the heck? Well, he had he had the knee injury that he suffered in high school that he never really recovered from. Mm -hmm. um, gruesome, gruesome injury. He's gotten really good. I mean, he is, um, I think, for the most, I would say for the entire season, he's probably the, been the most consistent performer on the defensive line, and it's a very good defensive line. He's really long. He's got uh, great burst now. You know, he's, he, it took him a while to get that knee injury recovered, and he's been outstanding. Um, and Josh is a tough guy, so I, I think that if you want to look for X factors for Sunday, he might be one of them. Nobody's talking about Josh Sweat. I think he's got a chance to be a really, really tough matchup for the Kansas City Chiefs and come after Patrick Mahomes. But he's fast. He's athletic. We saw him pick off a Dak Prescott pass on the Christmas Eve game and take it to the house. So uh, I know that in high school in Virginia, Chesapeake, Virginia, he was a superstar rated by one service as the best player in the country, went to Florida State coming off that knee injury. Mm -hmm. And uh, great to see him, really wonderful young man, and great to see him healthy and playing so well. And you guys have a great defense. We're not talking about the 85 Bears here, but you guys are doing a great job, you know, with, you know, with the defense, you know, shutting out, you know, the you know, 49 ers squad a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago who lost their quarterback in the first series. So they basically had they had to get Steve Young off the parking lot, you know, <laughs> probably playing. They'd have done a better job. Yeah, they probably would have done a better job. And then you had to, you know, two weeks a week before that, you shut down the Giants like, you know, you know, like it's nobody else's business. And told uh, Daniel Jones to go home. So just talk about this defense. It's been like they've been swarming at the football all year long. Yeah, they led the NFL in sacks with seventy during the regular season. The Eagles, you know, last year, look again, new new coaching staff last year. Jonathan Gannon comes in. They were playing well defensively, and then Brandon Graham got hurt in week two, and they never really got back to that level. So they kind of had a bend but don't break. Really struggled to get to the quarterback. Um, they were 29th in the league with all of 31 quarterback sacks. So they went out. They got Hassan Reddick. Um, they had Brandon Graham get healthy. Josh Sweat takes another leap forward. So four guys in double digits in sacks, 70 sacks overall during the regular season. They don't give up a lot of big plays. So, you know, that'll be a statistic to watch on Sunday. Um, and they come at you from a lot of different angles. So Patrick Mahomes will have to contend with the Eagles in a pass rush that comes from a lot of different places. Uh, and that's really, you know, been the strength of this defense. They've done a great job getting after the quarterback. They stopped the run. Uh, they've been able to play with the lead a lot of times, so that's really helped uh, the defense. And and Reddick, I mean, what a player. He's had, I think, 16 sacks during the regular season, 
three and a half more in the playoffs, 19 and a half sacks in 19 games. Um, so they are a, they don't really get the, the publicity, the acclaim. Um, they went out, they, they added Reddick, they added James Bradbury at cornerback. They added CJ Gardner Johnson at safety. They drafted Jordan Davis in the first round back in April. So uh, they are, they added Ndamukong Sue and Linval Joseph 10 weeks into the season. It's a really good team, really good defense. They play well together. They're fast. They're tough. And it's going to be a great matchup against, I think, knowing Andy Reid and how he uses his running backs and how devastating Travis Kelsey is. And, you know, Patrick Mahomes apparently is healthy, amazingly, after a high ankle sprain. To get him uh, mobile, it's uh, very much an incredible accomplishment. So, again, great matchup, Eagles defense and Kansas City's outstanding offense. Hey, Adam, you got a question for Dave? Yeah, Go um, I – you mentioned about the Kelsey brothers, but this is also Black History Month. So, so Dave, talk to us about how cool it is to have two black quarterbacks, first time in NFL history, playing against each other in the Super Bowl. I mean, I remember when Doug Williams from Gram um, from the Redskins, um, he went to Grambling, and his head coach was Eddie Robinson, and um, his coach at the Redskins was Joe Gibbs. So, how cool is it to have? two black quarterbacks playing against against each other in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and it's something that Jalen has made note of, and he's very proud of it, and it does represent a, a long um, long road traveled since the days of Doug Williams and the Washington back then Redskins. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's important, I think, for Jalen Hurts. It's important for Patrick Mahomes to be recognized for their quarterback excellence, um, no matter the color of their skin. So, I, I you know, both are extremely versatile quarterbacks, very highly intelligent. They have everything you want, big arms, uh, really well coached, uh, coachable, demanding great leaders. Uh, it's certainly significant in Black History Month that we've got, for the first time in, in Super Bowl history, the starting quarterbacks of the game are, are black. So they have made mention of it. Um, and um, it's, again, it's just another, another storyline in, in, in a game of many. Man, you got a question for Dave? Yes. What What do you think the atmosphere is going to be like out there? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great. Both fan bases are excellent. And we got a taste of it last night um, at the opening night. A lot of Chiefs fans here. A lot of Eagles fans will be here. So, uh, look, the Chiefs have been in the Super Bowl three of the last four years. They're, their fans expect it every year. The Eagles have been now in two Super Bowls in the last five years. So Eagles fans are starting to expect it. Two dominant teams, two great fan bases. I mean, mutual respect for both organizations, for each other. We have a lot of friends over who work for the Chiefs, who used to work with the Eagles, not only Andy Reid, but a lot of other coaches and front office people and staff members. So I'm really excited to see. I think it's going to be an awesome atmosphere. Great halftime act in Rihanna. Um, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. So, Dave, real quick before I let you go, um, is there one key that the Eagles could do to bring another title back home to Philadelphia? Because this seems like this year it's been Philadelphia. You know, they made it, you know, the Phillies yeah. made it to the World Series and the soccer team made it to the MLS Cup. You know, what else do you need guys need for, uh, you know? Well, we need to win one of them, number one. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, look, I think obviously I could tell you turnovers and scoring touchdowns in the red zone, but I mean, whoever wins the line of scrimmage is in really great shape. That, that, I feel so strongly about that, that, these both of these teams have pro bowlers up and down their offensive lines. They both put pressure on the quarterback. They win with four and five man pass rush. They don't have to blitz a lot. I think for the Eagles defense, you've got to find a way to somehow contain. You're not going to stop him, but contain Travis Kelsey. And if you can take the football away from Patrick Mahomes, that's great. But I, I just, from an Eagles standpoint, I think the Eagles just are ready to play a great game. And if the Eagles play their best game and Kansas City plays its best game. I just feel really good that the Eagles will prevail, but we shall see. Um, it's just a game. There's really no, there's no hidden secrets here. I mean, two great teams going at it. Um, win the turnover battle, uh, play the smartest football. Don't commit dumb penalties. Don't beat yourself. I will say this. There's only one team that's beaten the Eagles this year, and that's the Eagles. So if they can avoid that on Sunday, they should be in good shape. That's a good point. You know, you can't have a letdown now. That's the wrong time to do it. You can do that's a letdown. Exactly right. Against the commanders, that's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, not today. So That's uh, right. 
Well, Dave, mm-hmm. anything new going on at Philly, uh, PhiladelphiaEagles.com? Anything cool you've been working yeah, on? Yeah, I mean, we've got a ton of coverage. Uh, we really have a wonderful fan base. Our uh, media um, this year uh, was re- was – uh, reach the most fans of any NFL team. So we have a great social media team. We really crank it out. And for any Eagles fans who are watching, who are um, listening, um, please check us out on PhiladelphiaEagles.com as well as our social media. That's cool, Dave. Well, have fun out there. Enjoy and uh, keep the, bring the warm weather a little bit towards the East Coast. <laughs> It'll yeah. get there eventually, guys. Don't be in such a hurry. Thanks so much yeah. for having me. Thanks, Dave. Yes, have a good Thanks, one. Guys. Thanks, guys. Take care, Dave. Good. All right. Have good a good luck. Day. Take care. Thank you. All right, that's Dave Soprano, who, uh, Soprano, who uh, writes for the PhiladelphiaEagles.com. So uh, let me get uh, Dana Hughes on the phone. He, yeah, he's out there in Arizona. Yeah, you know, getting ready for – let's do the Chiefs side of things. So, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, it, 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 you can't have a letdown right now. You really no. can't. You know, if you have a letdown, then uh, that's the wrong time to have it. You can you get a letdown in week one through 15, but, you know, not not this weekend. So uh, Bingo. So, Bingo. Yeah, the Super Bowl should be a real good matchup. Oh, it should be. Oh, yeah. Should be. Um, last night, Orlando Brown, uh, uh, Matt and I know, who is a uh, – he's a local kid here from Baltimore who, uh, who has connections in the my girlfriend's family because her uh, – uh, Orlando Brown was taught by Nicole's cu- uh, aunt, you know, in school back in the old days in the elementary school. Um, he was there last night, the uh, the opening night. And somebody asked about him and his father. So I have a little clip from him. This is courtesy of the NFL on NFL communi- communications. So here it is. Yeah, it changed uh, my perspective a lot. Um, you know, you know, having a dad, obviously, um, after the age of 15, uh, not having a dad after the age of 15 was very tough for me. And, you know, now having a son that's two years old, uh, looking at him every day, seeing the way that he's uh, continuing to grow, and uh, thinking back on, you know, obviously the time missed uh, that you can't get back. And, um, man, it's, it's so beautiful to be a father uh, every day to look in my son's eyes, to look in my girlfriend's eyes um, and, you know, know that we created a life like this. And, man, I just, you know, if anything, it motivates me more to be as healthy as can be um, and to be there and, and be available for him in every single way that I can be. Yeah, um, I hope to instill, you know, mental toughness. Uh, I hope to instill um, joy and, you know, someone that is, uh, you know, super uh, motivated from within, uh, that's very confident in who he is and, you know, really making sure he doesn't make the same mistakes I did. Oh, no, man, we'll have plenty more. All right, we're trying to get Dana on the phone here. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I guess out in Arizona, he, you know, a lot of noise out there. Hopefully, he'll get back to us hopefully here. Hello, this is Dana. Hey, Dana, it's Chris Idell from Herbert and Radio. How you doing? All right, how are you doing? All right, thank you so much for taking some time out there. How's Arizona? Oh, so far, so good. That's good, that's good. I know you're busy walking around. Anything cool you've seen in the last day or so? Uh, no, I haven't even really been by the uh, football stuff yet. I didn't go to opening night. Uh, just getting into my room now, literally. Oh, okay, okay, so. cool. Nice. Well, let me like, I don't want to keep you long, but I was talking a little bit about the offense a little bit for Kansas city. I was doing some research today. Um, okay. run, you know, the rushing is, uh, you, you guys are leading, you know, 4.7 in rushing. Yeah. This year, that's better than last year, right? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's been really solid. We obviously with the rookie running back, uh, that we have in Isaiah Pacheco, he's been kind of a, a new infusion of energy and a boost to the run game. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to be a balanced team. We just, you know, anytime you, I've always told people, anytime we run the ball, the best player in the NFL doesn't have the ball. Mm-hmm. That's Patrick Mahomes. So you have to, you have to gauge how often you're going to, you know, take the ball out of his hands and, you know, kind of take away that magic that magic option. So, 
Like, uh, it's great between Isaiah Pacheco and Jarek McKinnon. We're balanced, as balanced as we could be. And, um, you know, it's a great compliment to our pass game. Yeah. Is Juju going to be available this weekend? Because I know Juju Schuster, is, uh, he, was, he was one of my good person in fantasy football a couple of years ago. You know, I enjoyed having him. Yeah. yeah. Is he going to be available? Yeah, I think as of now, the only receiver that is not going to be available is McCall Hardman. Okay. He is, he's been put back on IR. So uh, everyone else is either healthy or working back to healthy. But, you know, with Juju this being his first time getting to the Super Bowl, uh, I kind of feel like, you know, those are the guys that you're going to have to, you're going to have to pull them off the field in order for them not to play. So, mm. uh, you know, he's been around and he's, He's a, you know, he's a veteran, and this is his moment, especially with only signing a one-year deal. So uh, he's going to try to maximize every one of his opportunities. So I fully expect him to be out there and playing. Uh, Adam, you got a question? Yeah. Uh, before I ask my question, I'm like, I give a shout out to my friend Aaron Ninsley out there in Kansas City. He's a huge Kansas City Chiefs fan, and she loved watching you play when you were wide receiver, Dan, and so, um, oh, um, so um, talk to us about um, it's the Kelsey Bowl, um, Jason versus <laughs> Travis. So tell us about what it's going to be like to have two brothers going against each other on Sunday night. Yeah, I think it's it's a really cool side story. There's several, not just the Kelsey Bowl, but Andy Reid going, you know, playing mm-hmm. against his old team, Nick Sirianni coaching against his old team. Um, so there's, there's several different several different storylines that I think are cool. One aspect of this matchup that's really cool is that there's no there's no venom. There's no negativity. Mm-hmm. Not like, you know, with Philadelphia when they were playing the Niners, there was some, you know, a little bit of things that were stirred up. Uh, nothing crazy, but just some stuff that was stirred up. And then you had obviously – the history between the Chiefs and the Bengals. So the fact that we don't have that kind of makes this more of just a pure football game, which I think is really cool when you consider for all the football purists out there, the two dynamics of this team, uh, you got a really good defense for the Eagles against the best offense. And then you got a really good offense for the Eagles against a, a defense that's playing really well. So uh, we've had some ups and downs this year defensively, but when the playoffs have come, our stars have shined the brightest, and uh, I think it's going to be a really good matchup. Yeah. Um, Dan, talk about Orlando Brown. He's a local kid here in Baltimore. He played with the Ravens for a couple of years. You know, he's from Baltimore. He went out to Kansas uh-huh. City. What has he done? What, how's his development you know, you know, right now as an offensive line for the Chiefs? So Orlando's pro- he's gotten probably the most criticism um, in part because he's the left tackle mm-hmm. trying to protect the best quarterback in the league, as well as being a guy that has basically gambled on himself. And uh, whether he's turned down big offers or hasn't gotten the big offers, in either case, he's not paid to his uh, to his abilities. Uh, I don't think that's been a negative, but he's trying to play uh, for a big contract. Mm -hmm. So in order to do so, you have to stop the likes of Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard for the Bengals. And now you got the defensive front with Sweat and those guys for the Eagles. Uh, You know, he's going to have his hands full. Uh, But this is what you ask for. If you want to be paid and, and considered one of the top uh, tackles in the in the league, you have to play top tackle football at the top time, and this is their top time. So everybody's the focus is going to be on, as it always is, how is Patrick Mahomes being protected? How is he uh, staying upright? How is he going to be able? How much time will he have to deliver the football to Travis Kelsey and everybody else? And that. A large part of that is going on the shoulders of Orlando Brown Jr. But I thought he, I thought he's done a nice job. He's really, to me, uh, been uh, a solid force in the run game. I've been impressed with his run blocking. 
Uh, I think a lot of focus, like I said, it goes on pass protection, but his run blocking has really been uh, solid this year. So, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to have his hands full. There's going to be a lot of eyes on him. Anytime Patrick takes a hit, especially with that ankle, they're going to be looking to see what uh, Orlando Brown did. So we'll see how that unfolds. Okay. Well, Matt, you get the last question? Go ahead. Yes. Um, so what will the Chiefs have to do in order to win the Super Bowl? They will have to protect the football. Uh, I kind of go back to what I had said they needed to do when they played the um, the Bengals. Uh, if you look at our stats this year, one of the negatives of our team was that we our uh, ratio for the giveaway takeaway ratio wasn't very solid. We were actually in the bottom quarter of the league uh in giveaway takeaway which normally doesn't equate to a 14 and 3 record <laughs> so that tells you that even though you can have a negative uh give take ratio you can still play winning football we've shown that but go back to that cincinnati Bengal game go back to the jacksonville jaguars game and we were plus in those games we forced the other team to turn the ball over more than we did Mm -hmm. I feel like that's got to be the same recipe we have to use in this playoffs. And I also feel like the we're going to have to force the Philadelphia Eagles to feel like Jalen Hurts has to go throw for throw against Patrick Mahomes. Right. We have to force them to think that. That means we have to put points on the board and then lean on them to get outside of their game plan of running the ball and try to pass their way to a championship. And if, they, if we do that, then I feel like we'll, we have a good chance to, to take away the trophy. Well, that's good. But, Dana, let me let you go. I know you just got in your room, and uh, I want you to relax and get ready for a Super Bowl week. Thank you so much for taking the time on the phone with us, and enjoy the rest of your week out there. No problem. Thank you all. All right. See have it. a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Good luck. Uh, thanks, Dana. Mm. All right. That was Dan Hughes, who uh, – who was the former uh, wide receiver for Kansas City, and that was good. A little shout out to him. That's good stuff, there, Adam. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it's called Aaron. Actually, Aaron Ensley and her daughter Megan are huge Kansas City Chiefs fans, and actually, Chris mm -hmm. and Matt, um, Kansas City at one time.